Hi, everybody. This is Susan Clinton, one of your hosts for Podcast Tough to Treat. This is podcast number 190. And today we have invited a physical therapist who emailed us that wanted to talk about a client that had some discerning, disconcerting, excuse me, uh, symptoms that she wanted us to like talk through with her and see what we could find out. I hope you enjoy this. This is really a podcast about red flags and Mm -hmm. trusting our clinical intuition. And we look forward to hearing what you think about this and the direction that everybody talked. Erica? Yes. And also, um, we want to thank all the listeners who who have, you know, left us a testimonial or review on iTunes. We would really appreciate it if you could, uh, the, for new listeners or any listener who has not, who's found value with the podcast, please leave us a review. We would, we would really, really, really appreciate it. And we also, as most of you know, or maybe most of you do not know, Susan and I are members of, or on the board of GWHI, the Global Women's Health Initiative. And we are, you know, if you're not familiar with, with, with us, please go to GWHI.org and, you know, read about all the wonderful things we have going on. We've done a a ton of, uh, a ton of grants, primarily in the women's health space, right, Susan? Mm -hmm. And uh, we would appreciate it if you could, you know, uh, look, you know, from a philanthropic perspective, if you could donate um, whatever you can to our organization and to our cause, we would really, really appreciate it. So once again, www.gwhi.org. Thanks, guys. Um, sign up for our newsletter there. I know you already are signed up for our emails with Tough to Treat, um, but sign up for our newsletter. You'll get to hear about the the work we're doing um, in the maternal space for marginalized women and really increasing their access to pelvic health um, with free education for doulas, as well as like this the grant program that Erica was talking about. So give us a look, give us a donation, listen to the podcast like and subscribe and Mm -hmm. you know give us a review and (laughs) this is the time of the year where we can tell you we're grateful that you're listening we're grateful for the feedback because we know it's 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 valuable to people so help us help others find us thank you so much Hi, everybody. Welcome to podcast number 190. I'm Susan Clinton, one of your co-hosts to Tough to Treat, and I'm here with Erica Mello, my very famous um, sidekick and co-host of this podcast. And we are welcoming to the to the microphone today, uh, Kelly McLean, who is a physical therapist in Georgia. And I'll let Kelly introduce herself briefly, and then she's got a client she wanted to present, and so we will dive right in. Welcome, Kelly. Thank Welcome, you. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, I'm Kelly McLean. I'm a physical therapist uh, in Rome, Georgia, about an hour northwest of Atlanta. Um, I've been a PT for um, 100 years. Well, not really, just like 29. But um, began specializing in um, pelvic health about three years ago. Awesome. Okay. Well, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so w- would you like for me just to kind of go over the eval with my patient? Is yeah. that kind of where we yeah, just, start? just give us the background, the narrative, and, you know, we'll take it from okay. there. And just okay. keep, it, keep it generic is all. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, um, this patient sort of found me through word of mouth. She had her, her main complaint was this is this 10 month history of pelvic, perineal and rectal pain. She knows exactly the date, like January of 2023. Um, She woke up in the middle of the night with some nausea um, and some vomiting and diarrhea. Okay. And she described that as like bleeding, you know, sort of bloody diarrhea. So she, um, and that has just kind of been, that was the beginning to her. Um, she sees a chiropractor regularly and had prior to that. Um, and he's kind of led her to me. So um, th- that was the main complaint for several months. She just had this mm. um, left labial, uh, perineal, rectal pain, also somewhat um, posterior thigh 
pain, but her main thing was the the rectal pain and the perineal pain with sitting primarily. She is a dental hygienist and works part-time. So she sits throughout the day. And when she drives, she has a bit of a commute to work. And so um, sitting in the car is terribly uncomfortable. Sitting in her chair at work is terribly uncomfortable. The pain kind of she reported, you know, after the initial few weeks became a little bit more intermittent. So it wasn't just constant, but also a few months after this onset, she began to have numbness and tingling in those areas. So on the left, primarily, so left labia, perineum, rectum, posterior thigh that would sometimes go down toward her calf, she said. Um, But that was rare for it to go all the way extended to the calf and the foot. Let's see. She also would have this pain, like going from sitting to standing at times, and also with just walking. Um, She continues and has continued to have blood in her stool off and on during, you know, these last 10 months. She had a colonoscopy, which Um, was negative, except for it showed a redundant colon. She had an abdominal pelvic CT scan that was negative per her report. She went to a, the GI doctor did note to actually two very small hemorrhoids, and he said possible anal fissure. Um, So that was, um, that's also something there. And bowel movements are extremely painful for her. She was on a rectal uh, compounded ointment, but she stopped that. She didn't think it was helping. She does take a lot of supplements. Let me find those in a minute. I'll get back to that. So she, for her, her bowels, it is, um, you know, IBS. She says she's had sensitive stomach for long standing history. Um, she often has nausea, like daily has nausea. Um, sometimes she's constipated. Sometimes she has diarrhea. Her bladder, she doesn't report any urinary issues, just that she occasionally feels like there's some discharge and she's just not sure where it's coming from. She said that just happens randomly with sitting or walking, either one. Her belief is poor. She does does report numbness and tingling at night when she's laying on her left side. And so she will switch to her right side and her stomach. So it sounds to me like almost like a quarter off prone, um, essentially on that right. So she'll have her left hip flex somewhat and her left knee flex somewhat in that position. Her medical history, her other medical history, she had a motor vehicle accident in January of 2022. Um, She said that the only injury she had from that was a whiplash injury. She went to physical therapy for that at that time. Uh, She also has low ferritin and she has some liver um, hemangiomas. Oh yeah, her supplements are, she takes an oral magnesium, she does topical magnesium sprays, she takes um, digestive enzymes, aloe vera, milk thistle, and some adrenal cocktail. Some kind of supplement for that. Um, She has two children ages seven and five, And she doesn't really get any physical exercise because of her low ferritin makes her very fatigued. How old is she? 37. She's 37. Okay. Yeah. When I did um, some movement screens, she was limited somewhat in um, right lateral flexion. I guess right, right side bend was limited. Thoracic left rotation caused this ice pick sensation on her right medial scapula. So left thoracic rotation, right ice pick sensation. 
Lumbar um, range of motion was within normal limits, hips, SI, knees, all that checked out. Her gait, I know, and her posture, she's got forward head, um, decreased lordotic curve, posterior pelvic tilt, and mild hip external rotation bilaterally. Um, her abdominal wall and breathing, I just noted that she's like sort of chest dominant breather. Let's see. I did the prone, I did prone press ups with her on that initial eval, just kind of assessing kind of where she was with extension. She didn't show any symptoms that day, but in subsequent treatment sessions, I've done some prone on elbows with her and even just kind of prone with slight extension. And that really made her numbness and tingling more pro pronounced. Her main issue is the rectal and pelvic perineal pain, right? Not so much numbness and tingling, right? The pain, but what drives her crazy, it's like she says, it just, it just is maddening to her is this numbness and tingling ah. that is just there and will not go away. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, I mean, it does, it does wax and wane. It really, it does. Yeah. It is intermittent now, Yeah. Okay. but she, it just makes her crazy when it's present. Got it. Okay. Continue. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> numbness and yes. tingling is in the, in the same areas where the pain is, or is it different? It's in the same area as the pain, but also extends down the left posterior thigh. Okay. Um, and then I did note on the eval, she had a positive slump test. Positive for pain or pins and needles? Pins and needles. Okay. And then there's just some other um, like pelvic floor stuff that I noted, you know, that I'm not sure that it's, you know, it was, she was very, I could not do really an internal assessment on that day. She was just jumping off the table at kind of the external assessment there. Yeah, she had a lot of tone in the pelvic floor, um, overactivity, high tone. Okay, what else can I tell you from that evaluation or what questions do you have? Do you want to go, Susan, or should I start? I have a bunch of questions. Yeah, I can start. Okay. Why is she on, why is she taking aloe vera? I don't know. She is just she's a googler and so I I think she has just like gone down a lot of rabbit holes and she's just kind of grasping at anything she might have kind of been able to glean. She is she's convinced that she has a fistula and that is, has not been, she's not being diagnosed with that from GI or, you know, anyone that she's seen. So, but she just feels somewhere, because I asked her, I was like, what, what is your biggest fear? What, what are you afraid of here? And she is afraid that she has something really badly wrong. Okay. So she's yeah. worried about signs and symptoms of serious disease. So chiropractor for many years, what were they treating? Her back, her neck? All of it. Like she goes probably once a month and she would get adjustments and all that. She hasn't had any adjustments since she's been working with me. I've seen her for five visits over about a two month, mm, no, over about a six week period. Okay. And she has a long history of IBS? She has, yes. And I don't know if that's, she has a long history of what she calls a sensitive stomach. Okay. Does she know when that started? She said for as long as she can remember, she's always been one of these people with a very sensitive stomach. Okay. So two things I would like to know that you should probably trace down is what is her menstrual health like? And when did this sensitive stomach start? Um, I asked her about her period, and um, she just says she's very regular. Go deeper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go way deeper than that because she's normalized it. Find okay. out if she has pain, if she has cramping, if she does how long, what's the blood flow like? Is it heavy? Is it hard? Mm -hmm. Is it light? Does it change? And when did her sensitive stomach start? 
really that's really important here to me for the like the back thing. The reason I was asking about the aloe vera was I was wondering if she was having urinary symptoms because most of the time people will take aloe vera if they've got the painful urinary symptoms, but it doesn't sound like she does. No pain with with uh, or burning with um, or urgency frequency with no. stuff. Okay. And then she was in a motor vehicle accident in 2022, whiplash. Does she still have symptoms? Like she did. Yeah, she, the symptom that I think is remaining is that right <clears throat> mid scapular ice pick sensation. Okay. And that comes on with left rotation of her thorax. Yes. How, yes. Does, she, how does she sit in the chair? Um, she tries to be mindful of it. So I had her show me, um, on my kind of like my rolling stool, which can be a little bit similar to what she uses. She tries to, you know, when she was demonstrating to me, she had very good posture when she was, you know, demonstrating, but she's also leans over into, you know, having to position herself to be able to do, you know, teeth cleaning and all that kind of stuff. So I think she's kind of rounded and rotated. Clearly. I mean, she's a dental hygienist. <laughs> What was that, Susan? Rotated left. Yeah, I just got back from the dentist two weeks ago and I'm I'm visualizing what these people have to do, you know? Um, right. Did she have any constitutional symptoms at all, like fever or anything when she was having any of these symptoms, any recent infection, virus or anything like that? No, she, um, that, that bout that she had when all the symptoms started, she said she, no one else was sick in her house. She didn't have, it was just that one night, like in the middle of the night. Okay. Um, and then she was better the next morning. Okay. And then besides the MVA in 2022, any other um, in injuries or surgeries? No. No. Okay. And then when the, I, the only other question I had, and I'll have you let you continue is the, um, the, so the MVA, she said the residual symptoms basically is the right sided. Okay. And so she said 10 months ago, this started. So what was that in mid end of last year, maybe? So the, this new presentation of things happened the end of January, 2023. And her car accident was January of 2022. 22. Okay. Okay. Does she have any, so did you, okay. Are you, are you going to go into the objective exam now? Oh, yeah. Or? I still have a couple of questions. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I also I do as well. So okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, all right. So I'll go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, her two children. It was uh, vaginal birth, correct? I didn't. I don't know if I. C section. That. No, she oh, so had C sections with both of those, and she does have sensitivity at her scar still. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you when you did the slump test, uh, you I'm assuming you did the traditional one in sitting, correct? Yes. Okay. And when did you um? at what, maybe you don't remember, at what point did she start to feel the symptoms? Was it with neck flexion, thoracic, you know, post flexion? Was it leg extension? Do you recall? Um, you may not, you may not, That that's, that's okay. You know, that's interesting. It was on her, it was with extension and then um, dorsiflexion, and then it got worse with, with cervical flexion, but her, the slump test interestingly to me anyway, was positive on the right. Well, that's her MBA side. Yes. And she also does, she, she emailed me this morning and she told me this too it, in the eval. She also reports she gets pins and needles in her left arm. In addition to that perineal rectal left posterior thigh. It, all these symptoms sort of came on within the past couple of years, year and a half, besides the stomach stuff that she's had for a long time, correct? Yeah, they all this came on um, just, yeah, since this past January, 2023. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, I'm good, Susan. You can, if you have any okay. other questions. Yeah. She has been seen by a GI doc. Yes. Okay, and they did, all they did was a colonoscopy? Yes. Okay. And then um, she's had a CT. Has she been seen by, has she had her anal canal evaluated? First thing, especially since her fear is something bad is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, colonoscopy isn't going to pick up anything in the anal canal unless they're looking for it. 
and only then the 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 gold standard is an endo anal uh, ultrasound. Okay. So if she's got hemorrhoids, fissures, and here's the thing about fissures, recurrent fissures like this that have been going on for a long time, may have a they may be forming because of a drainage problem, and like there's cysts along the uh, anal canal that you can have a problem with that and you would never know it unless somebody looked for it. So she needs to see somebody who is a great colorectal person and have an endo anal ultrasound done if for no other reason, but to settle her mind down. Right. 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 Yeah. To yeah. settle her mind down for that piece. Um, so there's a lot to unpack here orthopedically, but one thing that is standing out to me is she's she started off with pain in these areas, and she's now having progressive power outages, numbness and tingling. And I know they've done an ultra. Has anybody done any imaging on her lumbar spine? No, or, but I told sorry. her no, but I told her that's what I would like to see next if she's able to you know she's going to the GI doctor tomorrow <clears throat> you know I just told her you know see if he'll refer you for you know a, a lumbar you know MRI I'd you be know. imaging the neck if I were him <laughs> yeah. personally she needs she needs all three pieces of the spine yeah okay I mean she really does and she needs an endoanal ultrasound okay. Okay. okay and I'm not a physician and I'm not saying that the GI doc isn't doing their job I'm saying that if she wants to clear her brain, the only way to find out what's happening in the anal canal is, and I've, I know this from many, many colorectal doctors that they say, you know, if they have recurrent fissures, if they have recurrent things that are going on, we really need to do an endoanal ultrasound just to be sure of, of what needs to be treated and why. So, and it may be that there's something happening that, you know, is causing this to keep going and, there, you know, it's that's gonna it's gonna take some good imaging there for that piece as well. So I feel like that there, you know, that the thoracic whatever that ice pick thing is, I think that is coming from the lump, the cervical spine, one hundred percent. Yeah, and I think the way she probably sets herself, you know, because that that makes sense to me, especially if she was driving, she was uh, was she rear ended or was she t boned. You know, um, rear ended. Okay. Eyes up into the mirror. She, uh, she just uh, had someone hit her. Yeah. But every time that happens, it's eyes up um, in the mirror. And so, the, the, you know, the tendency is for the right side to, uh, to, to take okay. a compression blow. Um, okay. You know, and it's significant because with the slump test, it was the cervical spine that brought on the right symptoms. Mm -hmm. So winding her up from below really brought it on. You know, so I think that there's, they sh she's not through with her cervical spine piece. I, I agree. But that part, yep. and then this other part, the numbness and tingling in the leg, did that come on? That, that, that was, that only came on recently. That didn't come on before with the car wreck or anything like that. Right. Right. So, yeah. But so all, all of this was after the car accident. Yeah. A year after. A year yeah. after. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, she probably had some of the thoracic stuff and the neck oh, going she on. She did. Yeah. She had yeah. the neck and the thoracic before. She's just been living with it. Yeah. Yes, it's occupational. Yeah. 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 And she's been living with it and normalizing it. So one of the things that I want to know is, did you do any kind of a muscle test, sensory test, dermatome, it, like lower long tracking nerve clearing on her? I did. Um, I did make muscle testing and there was nothing uh, abnormal with that. And then I was, the next time I was going to see her, I was going to do um, dermatome testing, um, but I haven't gotten to that, but okay. I want to do that. Yeah. I think that would be good to do. Yeah. Well, yes. What we're looking for is to see if there's a power outage. Yeah. Um, because that means there's compression of nerves somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this is generally kind of what you see, you see pain and then you start to see numbness and tingling and I don't know if it's because she's got a nerve root compressed or if she has a central space occupying, whatever mm -hmm. it means, mm -hmm. a central disc, a central, you know. Something. Yeah. yeah, we don't know. And that's why the imaging is going to be important. But what I would really like to know is if she is having any kind of hyper reflexia, anything that looks like upper motor neuron stuff. 
Yeah, I would also add. Um, you know, the, the Babinski probably won't show up in some of her. Does she have some conus? But I'd really bang on all those tendons. At the okay. tendons and the, the wrist, um, you know, the in the, the biceps and the biceps, yeah. Uh, uh, upper traps uh, region, that whole yeah. thing. I'd even bang on our jaw and see what's going on. You could also do an upper bilateral, you know, neural glot, like upper extremity neural tests. I would mm -hmm. do that too while you're there. Like you can pick one, median, radial, yeah, ulnar, okay. you know, just wind up the system. And, okay. and then what I would do is, you can play with it from there. You can, you can either, you know, you can add, you can do it in sitting or you doesn't matter. You can straight do a, you know, do a, have her do a slump. And I mean, I don't want to wind her up in a way that's going to really freak her out, but have her in sitting, have her do this and extend the leg or do something just to see if you can bring any other symptoms on okay. up from, whether, from whether her above. Lower, yeah. Whether her lower or upper, the thing that is, is peaking my interest is the fact that she's starting to get, left upper quarter numbness and tingling. So, which is why I think the imaging would be super important um, based on what they, you know, so, so it might be good to, do you have a good relationship with a neurologist in your area? Mm -hmm. yes. Like a really, like a kind of a maverick neurologist that'll take this serious. We We need somebody to look for something that shows up in their forties. I, my concern with this type of history, um, my concern with this type of history is three things that she's got some sort of autoimmunity since she was young, yep. right? Because the sensitive stomach, and I promise you, if you dig harder into her menstrual cycle, you'll find some things. So I'm concerned about autoimmunity. I'm also concerned at this age range. And she has that, how old are her kids? Seven and five. Seven and five. I'm concerned, and she and she's in her late 30s, late 40s. Late 30s, 37. Late 30s. Um, this is the time that things like MS show exactly. up. Exactly, bingo. So uh, in the colonoscopy cleared her of any um, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, which is good. Hopefully it cleared her of that, because that would be another thing to look at with this. Does she have any ulcerative chlor chlor um, colitis? Was that? something that needs to be re-imaged. I don't know because of the continual bloody discharge, but she sees the GI doctor tomorrow. She needs to reiterate that this is still happening. And should she, she tell her to ask her GI about an endoanal ultrasound. Yeah, Just yeah. ask. They'll either say yes or no. If they say no, then I would like refer her to somebody who will, who maybe will do yeah. it. Maybe the GI doc doesn't do that. And maybe they have another person in their practice that does that part. But that may be the next steps, you know, and sometimes we just have to advocate for ourselves. But those are the things that I I feel. And the reason that's why I was asking if you bang around on those tendons and stuff, you might uncover, you know, Hoffman's, you might uncover, you know, whether it's coming from in the neck, like something could be like, you know, compressing, like spinal stenosis can show up at any age. It can be congenital, and sometimes it takes a motor vehicle accident for that to happen. That could be one of the reasons maybe perhaps a centralized type of pain came on. Well, it also, just took a while for, for yeah. the, you know, for the, you know, for any kind of compression on the cord, because that's yeah. like a central cord kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and it's also, like right in the perineal area, right down the posterior it's, thing. It's kind too, of right. And not, you know, it, not long tracking. It's so too that, central. Yeah. So that, you know, so yeah, so you want to kind of like look for that. And because she's having the thoracic issue, I think it's all, if you're going to do these imaging, let's do them. Do, do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's don't miss anything for her to go through that. And also with the neck flexion, that's a significant sign and symptom of, you know, of a neurological, you know, what's it called, Lehrman that sign or something. It's, it's very much of a, that would be a red flag in my opinion. Um, to be honest, I would refer her out for that I, I you know I I agree in the MS I would agree with too I uh yeah I, it, I don't know we're you know I don't it, know it's highly unlike like it's on the differential though I would put that yeah. up there yeah but yeah. it's but it's not something that you need to be having the discussion with a nurse and no. you can talk to the neurologist before you send her if especially if it's somebody who will listen yeah yeah say, look here's what's happening and showing up in the clinic well this is why I'm sending her to you I don't okay. know how good of a historian she's going to be when she gets there. So I wanted you to have this information because, you know, people go into a new doctor and they, 
they they have they don't know what to say sometimes or they don't want to say too much or they're afraid they're not going to be believed or or whatever but the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is because you did a great job of asking her the one question which I think is essential in your heart of hearts what are you deeply worried about because until this gets taken care of nothing's going to help a huge barrier yeah, it's a cognitive she barrier. needs to know she needs to know she's looking for it and if her mind can be if they don't find anything then you can be very nice and sit with her and say we're going to celebrate this because we know we don't have any organic bad things happening here let's now start you know thinking about what we can do to start mitigating this and you know maybe she won't be thinking so much that things that the sky is going to fall and, and the pronoun elbows, you re, you reproduced her left-sided symptoms. And with a slump test, you reproduced her right-sided symptoms. It was, so I went back to my notes and looked. Uh, when when she, when we, I did the slump test with her on her right leg, it, it reproduced her left-sided symptoms. Okay. That's a, that for me, it would be the money shot. That, that's, that's a, a, like another red flag. Mm -hmm. um for you know for imaging or cervical spine i mean did you so do did could you rep reproduce any of her pelvic symptoms during your exam at all yes so with with manual just kind of like um palpation externally to like her coccyx you know it's extremely painful mm -hmm. um all around honestly like so the um, pudendal nerve area. So I was kind of doing some, just some really, um, so if, if um, left side was, if she was right side lying and I had left side up, I was almost kind of laterally, almost kind of decompressing that area, the pudendal area. And she got relief of symptoms when I did that. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like things are like, um, there's neural tension there. You know that for sure, because she was positive with the slump test. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So that makes sense to me that okay. when you lift and relieve it, that it's going to settle down a little bit. Compression brings it on um, because she hurts when she sits. Decompression now brings it on because she hurts when she goes from sit to stand. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a myalgia tension piece there because as she walks, um, you know, rotation is occurring or maybe not occurring, but um, the tissues don't like to be drug. And so that's probably what's happening there. Um, so I definitely think that there's some stuff that needs to be uncovered here. Right, Erica? That you got yes. any thoughts on that too? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I was going to say, did you, in terms of, of a movement exam, we'll just put the orthopedic hat on for a second. Did you do any, did you have a forward bend? Did you have a squat? Did you, was anything jumping out at you from a movement system perspective? Um, it, it didn't jump at, nothing really jumped out at me. The limitation, um, the limitation in cervical and thoracic spine did, that jumped out forward flexion, extension, nothing jumped out at me at, on the avow. She was able to, she was able to squat, but it was, it caused her, I think she was apprehensive because mm -hmm. of the, the, the perineal pain. It, it did increase her pain and she was afraid it was going to make it worse. Okay. okay. So hang on. Mm -hmm. so, wait. So when she squatted, it increased her pain or the thought of squatting increased her pain? I think both, but, but it did. Yeah. She said, she said, I'm afraid to do that. And then I said, well, just, you know, maybe just go as, as low as you're comfortable with going. Mm -hmm. And then she did. And then she was like, oh yeah, that, that hurts, in, you know, in the perineum. And she, okay. she has a spot. Okay. So the squat caused her pain in the perineum and it was pretty much immediately or most pretty much she was afraid of it immediately, and then immediately. okay got it yes. okay immediately okay mm -hmm. and let's see yeah and then so you know the next time I saw her you know I did it you know I kind of wanted to reassess some things so I did some repeated um extension tests and and that really increased her symptoms as well the the numbness and tingling right. symptoms the last time I saw her, you know, she was on the table and I was doing some manual work around the pudendal nerve, trying to just get her some relief there. And she was better. And then she went to sit up and then she said, oh my goodness, I feel that numbness and tingling 
all throughout my perineum. Okay. Yeah. So that's that that's that saddle paresthesia. That's gotta be evaluated. Totally. Yeah. So I was I I mean I you know internally I was I kind of freaked out with that and I was um I was like that is saddle paresthesia and you know what are we gonna do right now? And you know that you know that you didn't cause that, right? No, right. (laughs) I was I was just so taken aback and I was afraid that, you know, cause you don't ever want to like, you know, anyway, so. That's something um, that you want to be sure you tell the neurologist that it may be intermittent, but she is having full blown saddle paresthesia. Yeah. She's just not associating these symptoms with her, with her rectal pain or she's just, yeah. she's not associating it, it, them um, at all. Uh, I, I mean, I would put, I would, put money on it that there's a cervical spine issue for sure um uh and there, yeah, and there, yeah that cervical spine is kind of coming up on the radar for me too but you can't ignore uh yes of course and or yeah this the saddle paresthesia and the you know um lower lower extremity not lower lower lumbar you know kind of issue there right what about um ca- yeah. No, yeah. So Kelly, what about when, when you, when she, when you squatted it, I mean, she squatted and you had this, and you, she, she had the symptoms. Did you do anything to modify it? Like change your base of support or, or, or anything, anything? I didn't. And I should, now that you mentioned that I should have done, done narrow, normal wide, like you guys do. And I just didn't think about it at the time. Well, that's okay. So yeah, yeah, I just, at the time I didn't think about it. Yeah. You have too many things going on. I yes, think exactly. there's so much. I think you're 100% on the right track that this person, it's time for referrals. Yes. Um, and, and she she definitely, she needs to, I mean, she's very concerned about that. That's what she's scared of. So it's time to get some answers for her one way or the other. So if you've got a team of people that you trust that you can talk to, that's where I would start, you know, and, but those, those things I think are super important, you know, to get cleared up, especially if this pudendal, not pudendal, if this saddle paresthesia, like even if it's intermittent, that's still something's not right there. Yeah, so. there's there's something in the, I don't think there's any need at, at this point to continue to like evaluate, do slumps or anything like that. I think the, you know, it's pretty clear cut. Um, you know, if, if when you reproduce her symptoms, she gets freaked out, um, what I, what I would do is, you know, just do some gentle, I mean, she sits, so she shouldn't be afraid to quote unquote squat because she sits all right all day. And so I would, if you want to just do some gentle movement, I mean, we I always go to my wall squat, Susan, and I always talk about this, you know, center yourself on the wall. You know, you can do the normal narrow wad when you want, um, you know, and just every teeny, teeny mini squats on the wall. You could, you could put it, you know, ball, the, the Franklin balls in her armpits. You can, you do many things. You just want to take, you want to do some distraction here. You want to get her mind on like a movement that's not, not horribly threatening to her. And when she puts her hands on the wall, she'll probably feel more supported. And, and that, that's how I, if, if, if you're going to sort of, sh- you, you want to do like a more of a movement based, uh, so, you know, as well, uh, that's, that's what I would do, do to start. Um, it's D you want to de-threaten the environment for her. Yes. Um, and so when, when you talk about those wall squats, you're, cause I'm always wondering that in the pocket, like, are your hands on the wall? Yes. And so the hands are on the wall. And then, so that's like, they're kind of like grounding point and then they're just yes. squatting. Okay. It, it's almost like, I always tell the patient, you know, j- just pretend you're doing a, a bow, like a, like a waiter's bow. We just do a okay. bow or a squat, whoever, sometimes people okay. don't get, get the squat. And, 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 and if that's not working for her, Susan and I have talked about doing this as well on the podcast is she can do a kneeling, a kneeling wall squat, just put it on her, on her knees and do it if she, but I would rather have her stand and do it. Uh, but if that's sort of threatening to her, I would just have her go on her knees and do it. It'll give her, you know, she won't be mobilizing her neural, it won't give her any neural tension. It shouldn't, it shouldn't. Um, but what I would do as like, um, I mean, as a self check, what you could use, we talk about this a lot. You know, I don't know if you want to keep slumping her and checking her slump all the time. You know, I think that would, I I, I wouldn't, um, but you can, you can even, I mean, thoracic rotation may not do, you want to find something 
that to see if the intervention made it better, like test retest. You'll only yes. know that when she's in the room with you, because um, we don't have a sense of, sense of her, you know, her sort of her personality. But just for you, that, that, that's what I would do. But I would start her off on the basic sort of movement on the wall. She doesn't do standing, ever do kneeling. Um, she should be fine with that. No need to drop the head, you know, to start with. Um, I would have her focus on center. Um, and I, 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 that's what I would do while you wait for these other tests. Cause I do think that those are probably the, the first thing I would do is I'd refer her out. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then in, in the meantime, make sure she's not constipated, make sure she's not constipated and also have her do nervous system regulation. She needs to focus on that. Like no matter what she needs to focus on that because all of this is like, happening and she's getting more and more, you know, having more and more symptoms and risking more and more sensitization. So calmly, quietly, as much as she can do whatever nervous, you know, uh, system regulation she will do with you and for you throughout her day. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I agree. I just read a, things down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just read a, a case um, of, uh, so I don't remember what, what year this was, of a, a girl who had foot pain, right foot pain. Um, after uh, intercourse, okay, foot pain after intercourse, and it was uh, uh, aggravation, or uh, I forgot what the word what, in her femoral nerve. So you know, and that's what was giving her the foot pain. So the nervous system, I think, is you know really important in in this case, in in terms of it's you know neurogenic or vascular or you know. Uh, I've been, I've been doing too much uh, of my school work lately. <laughs> I'm wearing this like differential diagnosis hat, but you know, in, in cases like this, cause I have a, I have a case now that actually that's somewhat similar and you got to wear multiple hats here. And, and, and I think that it, you have to rule out, rule out the things that are really out of our scope of practice. Right. We can't, you know, in terms of the neuro right. and, and you, and you want to image um, and you want to get that, that imaging done and, and, yeah. And, and, and that, that's the first thing, but, but, you know, if you want to keep her sort of moving and as Susan said, get that nervous system desensitized, you know, have her, whatever works for, with, for her throughout the day, I would do, you know, I like the little squats, but once again, they may not be meaningful to her, you know, so um, her, yeah. her head is, I think her psychological profile, her, um, I think that's probably what you have to manage first. Um, in, in the office. Follow yeah. your intuition. You're on the right track for yes, sure. Yes, exactly. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I just want, didn't, you know, I wanted to get your guys' expert opinion on that. So um, thank you so Great much place. for helping me with this case. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank, thank you for you coming for on, coming. Kelly. And <laughs> to everybody out there, thank you for listening. And um, we will see you on the next podcast. The next episode.